So yeah, uh, welcome to Computer Hour Episode 2. Last week we talked about, uh, well, we were going to do what we were going to do today, but we got uh, waylaid by, uh, we went off on a tangent. I, we got tangented, which is something that happens to me often uh, because we needed to lay some groundwork around macros. And we did that for most of the time. And then we also got attacked by Zoom trolls who um, shared who joined the chat and took over in a very sort of aggressive and uh, blasphemous manner, um, sharing all sorts of uh, illicit and untoward imagery and, and audio snippets. It was truly quite chaotic, and we just had to abort the meeting because I didn't figure out how to mute them successfully. And now we've abandoned Zoom. We've ceded the territory of Zoom to the trolls, and they can go on there and uh, do whatever they want. So hopefully we're not attacked again. Um, and we can actually talk about uh, the plan, which is to explore and build basically from scratch a little test stubbing library, a humble little test library that's going to use some macros and solve a problem that I've personally experienced for the last, I don't know, bunch of years in the, in the world of Scala and just want to make a nice little API starting from first exploring the problem. You know, you have to understand the problem. I think Einstein said something like that. Uh, and then he said you have to solve a problem with from famous people. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. Einstein uh, definitely said that, as did Buzz Aldrin. Um, Buzz Aldrin loved Scala three macros. Uh, and, and, yeah, and then we're going to uh, yeah use use our solution to make it nice. I hope does that does that make sense? Um, d d does the word stubbing library make sense to you, Adam? Does that sound real? Are these terms? It's or is all it right. I mocking think it's, library? it's it's hard because I think I think so. Justin mocks. I generally uh, perceive mocks as intercepting what was sent, which is like sort of a very specific use case. Where I think stubbing does say like, oh, I want to implement some partial API. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's like there's so much terminology: mocks, spies, and stubs. And 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 if you've ever read Martin Fowler's or the like Gang of Four design pattern blog thing, they go into he goes into too much detail taxonomizing all of these tools uh, as object oriented people tend to do no offense so of people um, but just the, the sort of making arbitrary distinctions um, for things I don't know these distinctions I don't know if they really matter the nice thing about functional programming is it tends to you, you squint your eyes a little bit it all blurs together it smushes together into whatever these are just some slight variations in the same basic idea it's not really worth giving them different names um, hello Abraham I can show your message on the screen, and I can respond to you. Magic. Um, I love that. Polymorphic tests. Uh, so cool, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So I, I do have a bit of, yeah, last time we were messing around with some macros, but I will not continue there because I think we basically solved that, that problem in the previous video, but right before getting attacked. I do have some example code, though, to motivate us. Hello, Jason. I will also share your friendly wave. I don't know how large that appears on the screen and it if it includes good. all the code. Okay, cool. Uh, welcome. Thanks for being here. Um, this is already more successful than last time. Uh, um, this is great. Who was your friend's name, Adam, last time that showed up? At oh, the I beginning, the question asker? Yet. I think it was Jonathan, right? He, I, I'm forgetting his, uh, from, his. I remember his username, but not his not his personal name, which is a horrible thing to say. But when you know internet people, it's like you remember them not not by who they are, but what their what their at is, right? Yes, yes, no, no, all the time. And if I know back in the day when I was on Facebook, I would call people by their whatever their Facebook name was, even if it was like an awkward full name. Um, yeah, just associate the the handles. So, uh, motivating example. Here we have a test. The Zio test, and we have this thing called a batch processor. This is truly a contrived domain, just tried to make something up interesting. And we want to process here a bunch of entities. So Venus and Mars, it looks like we're processing planetary entities. Planets. And we want to assert that, that the response is that we have successfully uh, eliminated uh, these uh, entities. So if I run this test, um, it seems like, yes, launching missiles on, on Venus and Mars and it is it has succeeded in destroying both of those those planets. 
so this is great. Uh, we've we've written some tests and it passes. Uh, so what what's the problem here? Well, let's take a look. Uh, batch processor. This would represent sort of imagine, if you will, uh, some uh, the service under test. Yes, the the SUT. And, and to copy more Martin Fowler terminology, but this is the thing we want to test. Um, and these other things, these layers, uh, maybe I can use this feature if, if anyone hasn't seen it before, but zlayer.debug.mermaid is a fun one. And let me uh, um, open up SBT here and do a little compile. I should do a test compile actually. I'll, yeah, let me run test. And it'll Are you on the latest Zeo, or do you know which? Oh, yeah, I okay, know. So here, I mean, this I is not a very interesting. The exact latest version. So. Really? But it's fine. The debug yeah. graph? Don't worry about it. Oh that. no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so. That's so sad. Okay. Um, we got to add some tests for that. Um, so, so here's our little graph of our application. The, the batch processor, that's the top of the application. And it has a dependency on this, this GPT-4 layer thing, which itself requires a GPT-4 config. OK, so that, that's kind of the structure of this thing. So if you add that debug, it'll, it'll show you the pretty graph and, and give you a link as well uh, to a, a, a mermaid uh, graph, which can be nice. But anyway, um, let's look at the batch processor. So this is the thing we want to test, and this is the logic that we want to test. We don't really care about testing its transitive dependencies. We want to test just one thing, right? It's a question of integration versus unit test. Do you want to test the whole live system, or do you just want to test this bit of logic? And ideally, we would just test this bit of logic, especially because in a real application, it might be very complicated, as we'll, we'll make things more complicated for ourselves. But right now, this only takes one dependency that was fairly trivial to set up. But in the real world, this might have tens of services that it depends on, which themselves have tens of services. And we don't want to instantiate the whole world um, and have all this complicated configuration logic if we just want to test this. And so I mean, the I logic think one here is that a lot we're going to be given. Mm -hmm. A lot of people end up with, you know, they end up with these sort of either hacks or like no op versions. And not only is that a lot of string together, which I think is a problem. But they also end up with using sometimes real dependencies, which really slow down your tests. So if you value pro developer productivity, this is actually a bigger problem than you might anticipate because it can really it can really make it quite annoying. Yeah, especially if and we can simulate this, but say this needed to acquire a database connection or a Kafka, whatever service spin up an in memory thing. Uh, if you don't actually care about using that for real and testing that for real, that's a lot of wasted uh, time. Um, so the, the logic here is very simple, uh, but it takes a, a var args list of targets that we want to destroy. It prints out that it's going to destroy them. And then for each of those targets, it will call the launch missiles method on the target that exists on the LLM, which, uh, by the way, stands for a large lunar missile array. Uh, and, and the GPT-4 is just a particular instantiation of that, the galvanized planetary thrasher. So uh, th this is, uh, I don't know if you were thinking of anything else, but... Um, that's that's what that is. So we're going to use, use the elements are so popular these days, um, and we're going to use them to destroy some planets. So it doesn't really matter the actual implementation of this. We just want to make sure that uh, this this LLM trait has this particular uh, uh, interface, and so we know that it can either succeed with no information or uh, fail in a particular set of ways. So, so it'll either self-destruct or there's an invalid target or you, or you are unauthorized for some reason to, to, to operate this uh, missile array. Um, and so right now we're, we're sort of just testing the happy path because we're using the alive implementation of this, uh, or the real implementation of this, with, which behaves a certain way. Um, but what we want to test is actually the whole shebang of this logic. We would like to see, oh, well, what will happen if this does blow up? or if we pick an invalid target, or if it's unauthorized. And we don't want to make this brittle and tie it to our actual LLM implementation. We just want to test this layer of logic in isolation and not have to sort of know the implementation of GPT-4 uh, and get this to work. So, so far this works. It seems to, to, to blow everything up. Um, if, I, if I targeted Earth, let's see, we could see what, what happens here. Is it going to say, you know, uh, Earth destroyed? Um, in fact, no, uh, Earth is an invalid target. Okay, I happen to know that because I, I, I wrote this myself. But one could imagine like, okay, uh, I just want to test, the point is, I think I've, I've 
said it many times, just this stuff and not worry about the rest of our application. Further, um, we have this GPT-4 thing, which right now just needs a GPT-4 config, but you can imagine that this also needs sort of a Kafka and it needs a database and it needs um, uh, whatever, a uh, dog service. And if it, if it needs all this stuff, uh, Kafka, come on, database and dog service, well, now the layer that we generate for this, um, by the way, uh, GP, uh, Zlayer has a new derive method. I, I, I wrote the from function one back in the day, but somebody added a macro just for Scala 3, which is great, that just does the same thing. So this works for Scala 3, and, and it'll, it'll basically be the same as um, if you're used to from function uh, dot apply. It's the same thing. Uh, except uh, you don't have to write as much, uh, and that's nice. So yeah, I've started using that. Good times. Uh, so this will need all of these services now, which means our test is no longer going to work. And now we need to create, for the GPT-4 layer, Kafka database and dog service. So this is representing something that's more likely to be the case. It's not going to be so trivial just to instantiate one of those dependent services. Um, so that's one of the problems. The other problem is even if we were able to create that, how would we simulate all of those error cases um, in order to test that batch processing logic? So this is the this is the problem. And so I'm going to remove the GPT-4 layer and uh, the its config, which we don't need. And now we're going to get a different error, which just says the batch processor needs an LLM, and we don't want to provide the GPT-4 one. Uh, we want to provide our own implementation just for testing purposes. And so we're going to start doing this manually, and we're going to feel the pain. So we're going to solve the problem without macros. Uh, so that's the problem. I check. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, thanks, AI. And then we're, th and now we're on check this one. Check your so for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a, little, a little too eager. But, um, and so, yeah, so now we're going to solve this manually and see what happens. Uh, so there's a couple of ways of doing this. I like to make these things called, uh, I guess, uh, stub implementations, I tend to call them for, for this very reason. So uh, uh, what is this? This is an LLM stub, I can call it. And this would just be a case class that would extend LLM and be basically just a very simple implementation of it. So where is, what is it, uh, launch? It's not seeming to understand the, the interface here. Launch missiles, there we go. Override def launch missiles. And we can, if we want to, just say zio.unit, zio.unit. And then we can provide, I'm going to go down here, make a companion object, val layer equals, and hopefully it figures out the, ooh, well, that works. But actually, you could also do zlayer derive LLM stub. And what's nice is if you eventually do add arguments, uh, it will, it'll properly infer those. Uh, so right now, it One has thing none. I think is pretty common is making your layer sort of a function and then providing um, individual like result types. So maybe you like use an either or some sort of result type to um, <laughs> simulate what your ZO should return. And then that way you can just sort of pass it in on a per test uh, basis. But I think the annoyance here is like you end up with like a lot of clutter because every test now needs to provide um, or you need to do some other sort of uh, happy thing, right? Yeah, or so are you saying like maybe this would take the launch missiles implementation here, something like this? Well, you you know, assuming like oftentimes your services may have like many functions. And so what you sure. want to do is you're just trying to mock a single function. So you can add like mm -hmm. exactly right, like an IO. It, yeah, like in this case, you're right. It would, be, uh, it would be the launch missiles implementation. But in more common cases, you might just have like certain expected errors or whatever, whatever it may be. So so it's like a very simple version of like your the overall service. You're just testing that one function. Yes, exactly. So so like add four more example methods uh, uh, involving destruction and chaos. <laughs> All right, sure, uh, great. So now we have a bunch of methods, and this is maybe more realistic. A trait when it doesn't always have one method, and this makes our problem even more pronounced because now this won't compile will actually need to implement. And I don't know why it's not being sad. Uh, let me let me <laughs> compile the test. I wish the compiler yeah, was sad more. Yeah, yeah. It should really tell me that it's it's really bummed out right now. Um, maybe it's because I haven't imported the build. Let me see what happens. Um, but yeah, we, we need to Im implement all these other methods, which is pretty annoying as well. Like now we need to go through and, uh, well, let's have it do it maybe. Override. 
Come on, you remember what you did. Destroy city. There we go. Obliterate city. So now we have to implement all of these things. Uh, and maybe they have complemented, uh, co uh, complicated implementations, and we can't just do ZO units. And so we have to, like, if we don't care about testing them, maybe we can make them all qu question marks, because we know we're only testing uh, this particular launch missiles method in here. And then, but the, still, there's the problem is we want to have multiple tests, some where this fails, some where it succeeds, and yeah, what do we do? It's pretty painful. So let's actually... We give up. As programmers, I think giving up is one of the most important things you can do. Can you hear the cat? My cat screaming at the top of her lungs. No, we'll pretend okay. that that's not there. There's no cat. You're, you're, you know, if you're in the audience and you're hearing that, it's a hallucination. You should see a doctor. It's a very big problem. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what just happened. She just started uh, meowing real hard. Um, doesn't like all this uh, this talk. Of, she doesn't like all this boilerplate. Uh, she hates boilerplate. Um, okay, so let's let's write. Let's just feel some of this other pain. Uh, I was I was getting at. Let us make some other tests. So, uh, oh, I don't need to do the commas because I'm using this uh, sweet all. How do you recommend sweet all uh, in case you use the test? And that's kind of what we're we're using here. Um, you don't have to have commas, unlike normal sweet. Uh, so that's that's nice. Another macro, which maybe we it's can very sweet see how that's implemented function. sometime. I totally agree. Uh, so let's let's have it fail. What's one of these ways it can fail? So I'm going to look here. So self-destructed, invalid target, and unauthorized. So uh, fails uh, if a target is uh, invalid. Maybe I could just go with Earth here. I'll make this back to Venus. So we want this one to succeed. We want this one to fail. And this should say uh, Earth is not a valid target entity. Is that correct? No. No, that'll be a dot exit or what? So actually, if you if you if we look at it, it it catches the errors that occur and turns oh, them see. into strings. I see. So this is obviously oh, nice. okay. some pretty weird logic, but it's just to to show that we want to we want to actually test this logic, which catches that error. So we can make an LLM that always fails, and then we can assert that this should be the result in case that it fails. You can have to imagine in the real world, this would be something more interesting or complicated. Um, but I do want to just have like one slight variation on the, the, the result. It's some kind of transformation. It's catching and turning and stringifying it basically. Uh, so we could give this multiple, uh, you know, targets. Um, uh, grandma's house. Um, cool. Uh, okay. But there's definitely some problems here. So first of all, we have all these question marks. Who cares? Because we're never we know these methods are never called. So it's boilerplate and painful and it's annoying and maybe it'll eventually break. But uh, yeah, whatever. That's that's one piece of pain. Uh, the other piece of pain is now. Uh, let's see. So what what failed here? There was a difference successfully targeted um, things. I don't think I saved. Cool. So now there, there was Saving a is very uh, or is this? Venus destroyed, Earth destroyed, Venus destroyed, Earth destroyed, Venus destroyed. Why does it say Venus destroyed, Earth destroyed? I think I've screwed something up. Let me run this from here. Hmm. Why would it say Earth destroyed? Because uh, I'm not doing that. Let me go back to the normal test and see what I've got. Ooh, it's it's okay. Oh, it hasn't rerun. Earth destroyed? Ah, oh. oh, GPT-4. It's not recompiling because of GPT-4 uh, not having implemented all these other methods I've made. So I'm going to just comment out GPT-4 entirely. Uh, and now we're actually running and compiling. And now this is my expected uh, result, which is we expected to get invalid targets, Earth, and invalid target Grandma's house, but indeed Earth was destroyed and Grandma's house was destroyed. So that's wonderful. Uh, we, uh, we've been asked if we're in academia. I'm personally not in academia. I've never been in academia. I'm, I'm definitely not in academia. I, I, did, <laughs> I did three years of college as fast as I could, took as many classes as I could, and, and hated every minute of it. But it was so worth it. Oh, nice. <laughs> you sprinted. You sprinted. No, I, I'm a, I dropped exactly. out of art school, different art schools multiple times, and then eventually did a, a boot camp. Uh, <laughs> but I, I'm trying to sort of backfill some knowledge and reading textbooks. Um, Things that I should have read long, long ago, uh, slowly disimpostering myself. Um, 
Okay, so where where is this? So okay, now I got it to to actually run. I, I wish it let me know somehow that it wasn't compiling uh, when instead of just running the old version that uh, Metals does that. Is this Metals that's I'm, doing that? Yeah, Metals does just run the previously compiled, successfully compiled version instead of saying like, "Hey, buddy, <laughs> you're 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 getting false positives." Um, it's pretty easy to tell. I though, found this with is changing. Metals in general like breaks completely when there's anything not working. Which I think is a huge yeah. miss. Like, you know, IntelliJ working when things are that's why I, actually I still use IntelliJ so much is it just works even if and even if things are broken. Um it's but, yeah, it's definitely more f resilient to compilation issues. Um I think in in the new version of of Scala in three point five they've actually addressed this and they've they've made some changes to allow it to be more resilient. That'd be uh, great. To to non fully compiling code. Uh so that's useful. Um We'll see. Uh, yeah, I've, I've just gone with, um, why am I going with metals? I used to be an IntelliJ man, uh, a very loyal one, but, uh, oh, the AI, the AI convinced me. I'm in this cursor app now, which has better AI. So I decided to trade the tooling for the, 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 the job replacement um, situation uh, to, to train my successor. So what uh, are we gonna do about, it? just successor. tell us what the answer is, Kate. We're, we're, ready, we're ready to see the answer. Okay. Okay. So, so the the pain here is obviously that yeah, that's so that's not good. So, what's the problem? Is that well, we're providing this layer down here, and this is going to be provided to each test. It'll be instantiated anew for each test, but nonetheless, the logic will always be this one, which always succeeds. So, we want to succeed in some cases, particularly for this test, and fail uh, in in this test. And this isn't really great for doing that right now. Um, and we could parameterize this with like a launch missiles uh implementation which would be an like an io we literally this can accept that as an argument and then here uh well we'd have to deal with that and in fact this is no longer going to we can't just do derive anymore we have to do succeed and we have to accept here a layer that accepts a launch missiles implementation and and do that uh and now we have to provide a launch missiles implementation which i could start as eo.unit but obviously this is once again going to just always succeed. So we need to provide this to each test. And this is like my least favorite thing in the world. Um, it's not very fun, especially if we needed other layers in here. We need to provide it to each test. It's and not you very elegant. You need to provide some, but the problem with provide some is you need to provide the remainder. And so it actually gets very complex because the, provide, the remainder is usually what should be the largest if you're just providing one single stub to a single test. So this is like one of my, I found this exact same annoyance as well. And I think it's, it's not really solved with provide some. Yeah, because this doesn't actually even need the LLM layer right now. It'll only need it once the batch processor is provided. So it, it would, right. yeah, it wouldn't even work. Yeah. So, so that's not ideal either. And one can imagine this gets worse as you have more layers and you can make a helper method, but it's not easy. It's not obvious. It's not what people do in yeah, it just gets cluttered when people try to do that in practice. It's not fun. So what's another option? If we can't provide, if we don't want to provide, like ideally, we would be able to specify the response for launch missiles in a co-located matter, like right here, next to linearly uh, in, in, the, in each test. So somehow here we could specify, oh, uh, this one should fail. How can we do that right before batch process? How can we, how can we do this? And well, uh, this is where we have to solve some problems. And so we want to provide one layer up front, but then we want to uh, somehow affect the implementation of that layer below. And one way, one very inelegant way, which uh, I'll leave it momentarily to percolate in your mind uh, in case then you can you know, judge yourself right or wrong, would be to maybe store a ref. Uh, so some kind of mutable, instead of just what we were doing there, uh, a single implementation that's hard coded up front, we can have a ref of an implementation and we can swap it out. And this implementation can basically just be to get that ZO out of there. And because that is an effectual function, we'll have to flatten it. And uh, now instead of starting with an implementation, we can do a little bit of a uh, uh, ref dot make, and I guess we could start it out with um, uh, uh, zio dot unit, and then we need this ref here. Why is this sad? 
it's a ref of, oh yeah, because I need to give this a type, of course. So this needs to be a ref of IO LLM that. So super ugly, super ugly, and we're going to generalize this in a moment. Um, but now, and not only that, back to like who, about. you know, as if tests were not complex enough, I wanted to add some mutability, um, some more uh, different ways that we can change things dynamically, <laughs> and not in a controlled <laughs> manner, but in sort of an abstract freeform manner. That's exactly what I'm looking for in my production <laughs> test. Yeah, and, and that you have to implement this every single time, and this is only handling one of these methods, so we'd have to handle the rest of the methods as well, and it's easy to screw it up. And right now, also, okay, so we have this ref that, so that exists in there, except right now it's, everything's going to fail because there's nothing, or it's, it's all going to have that default implementation of re returning unit, um, which, isn't, which isn't great. So we want to be able to override this. So the way we could do it here is, well, we can somehow say service with Zio to grab the, uh, the LLM stub, and then we'll need a way of setting the implementation for, uh, what is it called again? Uh, destroy planet or whatever? Uh, uh, launch missiles, launch missiles. Um, we wanna somehow set, set that implementation is, so set launch missiles, and here we could do something like Zio.fail, and then our, um, what is it, LLM error dot invalid target uh, whatever, Earth. Obviously, this method, and I'll and I'll I'll just do uh, Earth for now. And this method doesn't exist, and it's ugly. So we can fix this in a couple of ways. Well, yeah, we want to add a method to our to this thing. Uh, it's called set launch missiles, which would take an implementation and it would just set the ref to be equal to that implementation. And this will cannot fail. This is going to be a a UIO of unit, I believe. So we're starting this thing with this ref. And then right before we go to call the function, it's going to use that LLM implementation and therefore access the ref IO and, and call it, we're going to override it so it does exactly what we want, which is to fail. And theoretically, this should work now. And it does, yay. So we've solved the problem, albeit in a really awful uh, manner. Um, so this is ugly for a couple of reasons, but this is kind of the beginning of what we wanna do. Now, a couple of problems to, ex to extend this. Uh, when designing macros, this is gonna be a, a, a design tip, um, you want to come up with a very regular uh, pattern. So we don't wanna write this ourselves. So this is definitely a target of macro. Like we're gonna just hammer this with our macro hammer until it goes away. This is boilerplate, so this is bad. But in order to uh, destroy this boilerplate with macros, ideally we can make it very normal looking. And right now we have this set launch missiles that'll take the type that this returns and basically everything will need a separate set method for set destroy city, set obliterate continent, and a separate uh, argument to this thing. Pretty awkward. Um, it'll be difficult to generate that with, with macro. With macro. I'm gonna <laughs> use the singular. Um, with macros. So maybe what we can do is we can have instead sort of this impulse ref which could instead be way hackier than this and be a map from the name of our method to anything because these, these things can return any implementation at all. And then the implementation of, well, uh, launch missiles would be to get our, our, our item from the map or get our map here, which is confusing, our impulse, get our actual impulse, and then uh, just get the name of the method. So we'll... And no, we're not going to do anything else. It's just going to be that. Um, of course, this is of it. type any, oh, so we have to. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm going to actually say get or else. I'll throw an error if this is miss missing because you know whatever. Uh, and then I have to say as instance of. So super hacky, super type unsafe. That's okay. And I'll get to why in a moment. Uh, and then also we don't want to have all these specialized methods. So instead we can have something like you know insert impl and then it'll have the method name and then the actual implementation and we'll update our map with those things and of course that means here it's going to have to say uh insert impl launch missiles which is super awful as well uh, and error prone and if we had a typo here everything would break um but we're gonna well, get to one that more moment. problem is that your your result there is not type safe either so because you have to pass it in as any you could probably find a way to like 
make it specialized to a Zeo something, but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be great. Oh, true, true. So we could we could screw up both the name as well as we can literally put anything here because the implementation it takes anything as an implementation. It doesn't know anything about these and then underlying you're casting, Yeah, your casting doesn't work and, and all that. Yeah, so it'll fail for a whole bunch of terrible, terrible reasons. So I mean, so what I just did was I just made this. Now we're making a uh, a map, and at this point I can say uh, this is going to be a map of. Let me get the types here. String any, and then we'll put that little thing inside of there. Uh, I could do underscore syntax or something, make that prettier. Uh, so crazy looking, absolutely crazy looking, and. And if a macro did this, it would it would basically have this implementation for all of the rest of these as as well, um, just looking up into the map. And so, if you ever wanted to call any of these methods, you would have to make sure you first inserted an implementation for them. Uh, so yeah, kind of crazy. Um, let's see. And, and this is unsafe. So this would also be a, a target of the macro. Um, so. When designing a macro, you can have this boilerplate, you can have this ugly stuff, you can have type unsafe stuff, uh, and the macro implementation that would eventually replace this, we could figure out some way of making this so that it would fail at compile time if you uh, provided the wrong type for the particular method. And we would actually ideally like autocomplete for this. We wouldn't want to have the user type out a string that that's just not fun and and slow and error prone um, and you can actually you know it won't it won't be able to be automatically renamed by IntelliJ or Metals or something like this a uh, bunch of problems we can still have a compile error if it's the wrong string but we don't even want to use the string at all so we're going to look at a way to get autocomplete here and have a compile error if these things don't align and just have a nicer syntax um, uh, so so let's see. So let's see what we can do. Uh, there's actually a, f a few more things we, we could we could talk about. Uh, let me see everything uh, here. So yeah, one nice thing would be like this is super ugly uh, Zio service with LLM stuff. But then again, if this were implemented by a a, uh, a macro, it doesn't really matter. But just for my own OCD, uh, I'm going to just have a, a an accessor here um, that will just call service Zio <laughs> service with Zio here that will require an LLM stub. Z nothing unit. Cool. So at least at the call site, we can, for now, make this slightly less horrific looking uh, and maybe just a little easier to understand. Um, and we and we actually don't have a, a default implementation anymore. The map starts out as empty, so which makes more sense. We should give semantics to each of these calls. Uh, and so let's test this again. And it works. And let's also uh, say test uh, fails with self-destruct. I don't know. <laughs> I'll see if it remembered that option. No. Zeo.fail LLM error self-destruct. That, is that one of them? Self-destructed. And I forget what the message is, but let's just run this test and see what it says, and then we'll fix it. So it says, you blew it. So cool. That's what happens. You blew it. With when a people say test driven development, they really mean um, you know testing until the strings match in the in the console, right? That's that's what it means, right? Exactly. Uh, did we get any comments? Okay, cool. All right, so this is this is basically the beginnings of the implementation before the macro. It it works. It's sort of regular. You see a pattern here um, that you just need to change the name of the method and the implementation, and those should match up. And then with this, it's very boilerplate uh, written, but there's a general structure here that will be easy to abstract theoretically, where it's sort of if you're going to make one of these, uh, sort of create a new, it doesn't need to be a case class exactly, but maybe a, a class, um, whatever your, your trait is, a stub, it'll have this impulse map that's totally generic. It'll extend the trait. So whatever that trait name is. And then uh, basically f for each, <laughs> if you imagine some template, this is not exactly how it, how it works, but for each uh, method on this trait, we're going to say def method args. It's, gonna, it's basically gonna be implement, an implementation of that method. And it's going to look up, uh, get the imples, look up the method name, uh, method.name or something like this. Otherwise, Throw an error, method name not set, 
and then cast the result as the uh, the method method return type, uh, something like this. Not this is not real code, but that's the general pattern that we can see that it, it, we're going to implement something like this in, in macro world, and it's not very crazy. Uh, there's some difficulties nonetheless, um, but we'll get to it piece by piece. Uh, so. This is half of the, the macro battle. When designing a macro, we want to think of the, the target syntax. And we found it. We found some target syntax. It works. It runs. Uh, we've made it regular. We understand it. It does most of the heavy lifting. And we're going to eventually I think have... there's a little bit missing to the syntax, though. And I mean, I know you, I know you know that. But, but I mean, again, we talked about the string. Like, you don't, you don't want to be putting strings everywhere, so... Oh, well, this is okay as a target, as for the output. Um, this isn't going to be uh, our our sort of source syntax, for lack of a better term. I see so we still need to figure okay, out sure, what sure. does the user yes. write that will eventually the macro will expand, macro expand into that target syntax. So there's two halves to it. We we solve this problem for the most part. Maybe we'll have to adapt it, but now we need to think of the source syntax. Um, and in reality, when you're designing these kinds of things, you think of both sides. You burn the candle from both ends. You spend a little time at one end, jump to the other. They inform each other because, uh, like, before we even did this, is it is is there a source syntax we even want for this that makes sense? Like, what's the what's the thing we wish we could write? That's a reasonable place to start sometimes, um, but also sometimes starting from the boilerplate thing that works as well, um, and, and jumping back and forth. So now we need to figure out what do we want to write instead of this. So we have this target, but what do we want to write? And what I'd like to do is something like this. Uh, which would be uh, maybe a method like stub, because that's what we're sort of dealing with here. Sorry for all the red. Then giving it the name of the trait, perhaps. Uh, and then we could use an underscore like this, like an anonymous function, sort of like Zio service with, for instance. So just to show an example, Zio.service with Zio would be very similar to this. I would take that and then I get a fun I get to call a function on it, destroy city. Uh, Charlotte um, or whatever New York. Um, so that that and that's pattern just accessing sort of. the Zio environment. That, I mean, for those of you who don't know Zio, right? That's basically just dependency injection. It's just saying, "Hey, go give me any instance of LLM, and I'll use it to destroy the city of New York." Yes, yeah, so this will grab some phantom LLM out of the environment, adding it as an environmental dependency to this whole Zio, and and then call that call this method on it, pass it along here. So that's why we get to call this on ourselves. This is going to be the LLM uh, instance. Uh, but what's nice about it here is, and what is the name of this? Uh, launch missiles, right? Launch missiles. And then what we could do is provide uh, the result type. So that's kind of what we would, we would like to do. Instead of this, we want to write this. And let's make this compile very quickly uh, to get an idea of why this is nice. So I'm going to make a method called stub. It's going to be parameterized by a service, and then it's going to take this function, which is going to go from the service to something else, which I'm going to just say is any right now. And then it's going to have the result, which I'm also going to say is any right now. And then for now, who cares? I'll make this just a, a UI of, of unit and will not have an implementation. Uh, and I've misspelled something. So this is one of the great reasons of having this function is that I'm not doing a string anymore. And by having it be a function here, I get autocomplete which is pretty nice. So that totally auto-completes. Uh, so that, that, the macro can transform it into, into this. And this is, this is a pattern. Um, basically, this function will never be used. In fact, this doesn't even make sense because if, if we look at it, launch missiles takes a planet. We don't even need to specify that All, we're, because we're going to grab the abstract syntax tree. And if we remember from last time, every time you call and every time you dot chain onto anything that turns into this select AST node. So we're going to have a selective sort of underscore, something like an ident of this underscore thing to uh, uh, launch missiles. Uh, it's not even going to be an apply oh, because oh, we're never calling apply. this with You're anything. Right. Yeah, we don't even You're care. Right, if, yeah. if we did, we probably also want to handle the case where they did something here. And that would be a slightly different uh, syntactic node. We want to make it resilient uh, to that as well. We could think of other things to do. 
we could make it more of a mocking library and by putting a, a literal value here it can sort of be like in a in a pattern match to have one of those literal patterns where this will only work if it's called with this exact string we can think about some other uh, other ways to, to to make this a little more advanced but for now we just wanted a way of getting exactly the name of that that method so we can turn it into a string basically and insert it and in, ins insert the result into that map um, and by doing it this way we get autocomplete which is super great uh, we get autocomplete and we also of course get the abstract syntax tree at the end um, now nothing is preventing a user from doing anything here because it's just a function that goes from the the llm type to anything uh, and there's no real way of in the type saying it has to be a method on that thing um, this is where also in the macro you can see you can get information what's so cool about scala macros unlike rust or swift macros is that you have all of this compiler context and you can say okay what are all the methods on this trait and is is this what is the symbol uh, for this method that you've called does it exist on this trait uh, what is its return type um, is it declared directly on this trait or is it inherited from something like you we can get all the information we need and give an error message if it's not a method on the trait and, and something else completely um, or like an extension method something that wouldn't make sense to to be stubbed in this case or that we couldn't really stub in this case uh, so that that's that's the beginning of the other half and you could have started with this as well and and, and there are other ways that we can imagine making this uh this macro um like wouldn't it be cool if also maybe there was something else where it's like llm stub equals magic stub of llm and then what else could we do we could just say uh llm stub and maybe this had a method on it it was something that was like generated completely at compile time using new scala 3 transparent macros which and maybe we could make a method called set launch missiles or or, or launch missiles that was the thing that it sort of returns zeo dot unit and it could it could be type safe and and all and we could still get autocomplete using other techniques and that would be a little more complicated and let's not look into that just because it is a little more complicated and also wouldn't work with intellij because it would require these transparent macros so these are the sort of the nuances the options for the design space that you eventually learn after writing a bunch of macros and are like okay uh how do i balance this um and so this should work I with do wonder how because much, how much could be done with property testing so you could generate like infinite possibilities for what what could be returned it'd be cool to do some sort of like capturing of like what the what the potential values are and then just like produce them so it's just like oh this just produces things you have no control over it good luck that would be kind of cool like a property based um you generate implementations of a whole trait uh all the possibilities right. I guess the only question there is like, what kind of properties would you want to hold? Um, <laughs> uh, Cause that's like so unconstrained. Like how would you test batch process yeah. with something that sometimes explode? Like make sure, I'm sure there would be cases, um, but no, that's definitely a cool thing that is possible. Uh, so yeah, and, and the reason why this would work with IntelliJ and everything else is because we're not, like we didn't write a macro yet and the types are lining up. Um, and so this is like a fun way to test macro APIs. Like if it works with just the normal Scala types, great. You don't have to do anything crazy in your macro. If they're going to get the autocomplete, um, it's going to work in IntelliJ as well uh, instead of doing the transparent macro -y things that are a little more advanced and only really work in, in metals at this moment. Um, cool. So I guess let's actually make this part work. I think that would be a good thing to do with the rest of our time. I mean, we have 12 minutes, so I think we can write a macro that does just this half. This half will probably need to wait until next week because it's going to be a little a little crazier. But I think we could at least get uh, get this thing to work. So our source syntax um, of, of stubbing launch missiles with, notice I've also put hello here. We would eventually want this to say, this is not the right type and give a nice compile error so we can have really nice compiler errors. That's one of the fun things you could do with macros. Um, that's obviously how this whole thing works. Like if I say zlayer.succeed and provide something that's too much, it's going to say, hey, you provided more than it's required. And if I did this in the console, it would have nice, pretty uh, um, uh, colors. Everything. Pretty colors. Uh, oops, I've accidentally closed one of our windows. There we go. Okay, I'm back, I think. Okay. 
Where are the pretty colors at? Give me the pretty colors. Yeah, pretty colors. So we can have pretty colors. And that's what's most important. Um, okay, so let's implement. Uh, let's implement the macro. Uh, and the goal is to go from the weird stuff source thing is some syntax magical to target syntax. Um, yeah. So let's see if we can do that. Uh, so I'm going to pop over to our package. Well, yeah, I've, I've, def I've defined stub right here. So we're going we're gonna to steal this. We need the stub. And we'll go over into stubby's package where we were doing this debug thing. So we're going to remove the debug and put stub in here. And import zeo.star. Cool. Uh, one actual other thing to note is that we probably want to change this just a little more because right now this doesn't return, uh, or if we see what it returns, uh, it returns a UIO of unit. But this returns a LLM stub. So let's fix this very quickly. And this is actually going to be a problem because our at this call site, when we call stub, we're not going to, uh, eventually this LLM stub is going to be created by a macro. And macros experimentally can create classes, but I don't think you can refer to them. We won't be able to just sort of reference LLM stub. Scholars macros are very uh, hygienic and they make sure that you don't reference things that don't exist. They're very careful about that. So we can't just call out to some LLM stub that was defined elsewhere. We'd need to pass it in somehow or something else. And one of those something else is we can do is we can actually break this into sort of two halves where I can make this other trait called stubbed. And what this can do is it can have the uh, def insert impl on it. Uh, oh, and will that need, oh, because this is specific to a type, you don't need a type parameter on the actual method itself. So it'll know the exactly. service already. Exactly, and, and here we can have this be both LLM and a stubbed LLM. Uh, and even further, if we wanted to, we could, uh, well, we could, do, we could do a bunch of things. Uh, we'll get to that later. I think this is enough for it to work. Um, and then this is what would have on the companion object def insert impl, which would be uh, a ZO service with uh, stubbed of service. Don't need that. Um, and this would return the thing that it should actually return, which is a ZO of stub service nothing unit. Uh, and of course, this would now need a tag, unfortunately. Um, so instead of doing, uh, where, where did we have it? Instead of doing the target syntax of this, it would be something like stubbed LLM, or sorry, stubbed insert impl LLM. This would all work the same way. Our tests are still going to pass because this, the, the version that we passed in, LLM stub, extends both uh, LLM and stubbed LLM. So when we go to grab a stubbed LLM out of the environment, this trait satisfies both of those properties. It, it satisfies both the LLM that is required by the batch processor layer, as well as the stubbed LLM that's now required by the LLM, uh, the stubbed insert impl situation. Stubbed We're insert We're fulfilling impl. two roles with one, with one value, I guess is a good way to... Think. Yeah. And this is a nice thing to do as well. If you do make your own bespoke, highly polished stub implementations, which are sometimes useful anyway. Um, like if you actually want to create a test version of like a repository or a database where you have a ref and you actually want it to not break in weird ways, but sort of be a, 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 a responsible uh, imitator and, and, and a real sort of test proxy that mostly acts like just an in-memory version, um, then it can be nice to break out some special methods that you want to add just for the test implementation into a separate trait. If you, it, I mean, that can be a nice pattern. Um, that's generally what I do. And then you can have a single class that extends both. Yeah. And this is how, I don't know if I can get to test clock or whatever. No, I can't get to here, um, get there. But that's basically how the test implementations work in, in Zio proper. Okay, so almost there. So now we want this to work. And so it should actually, if we think about it now, return a zeo of stubbed service uh, nothing unit. And of course, stub doesn't exist here because I implemented it in the test file. So this will be something that belongs 
in our uh, library as well. This is all library code. And uh, is it sad anywhere? Stubbed. Not found stubbed. Well, that's because I need to import stubby star. Stubby star. Cool. And now we can actually implement this thing. And for this to work, well, a macro must be an inline definition. And it needs to have a splice body. We talked about this last time. And we're going to have a macros file, which I believe I still do. Macros. Um, or I just defined it at the top level here, I suppose. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, I'll, I'll keep that. That's fine. And then I will just call us this stub impl. And I guess I could even just define it in here. I don't really need to do it in a separate macros file for now. And this is going to take the service and the selector, but we need to quote it, and the result, and which we also need to quote. And it doesn't need to be uh, curried like we have this. And now we need to import a few things. So scala.quoted.star, we can throw that up at the top of the file. And now we can implement stub impl. And it's basically going to be uh, mirroring the signature, except everything is going to be an abstract syntax tree. So it's all going to be wrapped in expert. So that's basically the, uh, there's a few transformations. So let's see what it's done. It's totally failed. Us doesn't matter. Uh, so a, a few things. If you reference a type, you're probably going to want to add the type context bound because that allows you to reference it in uh, a, a quote inside of this body, which is useful. And then everything else is going to have the same type except just be wrapped in an expert, including the result. And if that is the case, uh, oh, we need one last thing as well, which is we need to using quotes. That's the full sort of thing we have going on here. And what's sad about this found, oh yeah, it, it made it curried. We don't need it to be curried. There's no point in it being curried. Uh, so there we go. All good. Uh, a little ugly looking, but we have our macro shape. And now we can start debugging this thing. Um, so I will start out by saying import uh, quotes.reflect.star. And then we can uh, start blowing up. So report error and abort. And I can say, huh? And we can just do selector.show. And we can see where we are at. Um, and I'm going to say uh, test in a loop. Well, you need to provide says, the... Oh, no, no, that works. So yeah, it no, is blowing up in the right... one thing. Yeah. Yes, great question. Uh, so this we is... Know, we, we, think... we know why, but I, I won't tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> so the, 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 the problem is, though this is an inline def, I think we talked about this last time, right before we got blown up. Uh, basically, this is an identifier of this. It's, it's like literally referring to selector here. But we want the abstract syntax tree of what was provided, which is this lambda. And so we want to preserve this abstract syntax tree and not have it replaced with this simple identifier node, which is what referring to selector uh, uh, would, would be down here. And for that to happen, you need to inline it. And now that we've inlined it, we can see, ah, we get the full shape of the, the macro. It's a little weird looking. It's a underscore dollar one to another lambda. What could this be? Any guesses, Adam? So this is because you didn't provide any function arguments. And so this is where things get very, uh, very odd because you start to feel um, very betrayed by the way the compiler uh, actually represents things versus how they look. Yes. So this automatically, because launch missiles has an argument which we didn't provide, it automatically uh, so-called ADA expanded this and turned it into a, a little... Uh, another anonymous uh, lambda that went from string, which was its argument, right, planet string, to the actual return type, which is uh, whatever it was. Uh, um, oh, uh, something magical. Yeah, and then, it, and then it called. Then it is going to call the method with that. Um, so dot launch missiles, <laughs> uh, missiles, um, uh, and plant. Whatever, fine, plant. We can destroy plants as well. <laughs> um, so that's that's a little crazy, but it doesn't matter because we want to handle this case. We want to handle this abstract syntax tree. So it's just a matter of matching on the right abstract syntax tree. So we don't even really care. What does that abstract syntax tree look like? Well, if we don't say show, we can see um, selector dot as term. If we want to look at the actual abstract syntax tree, and it's going to be this horrible thing. This absolutely horrible uh, 
really verbose. Uh, verbose unreadable, thing is very difficult. Complete, to completely unreadable. It's completely unreadable. The dollars, the proxies, the underscore ones. I've I've implemented in another fact in another file here this report.debug thing, which is going to give us a slightly better representation for some argument of representation, not entirely. It's just really deeply complicated. It's all this stuff. There's this inlined node and then a block and a list of there's this def def that takes parameters. Like, do we even see anything that represents anything that we were thinking about? Okay, here's planet deep inside of this. Uh there's launch missiles. There's all this insanity. Um and so that doesn't even really help us. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to say selector as term, then we're going to match on it exhaustively, and we can sort of see uh, what we have here. And I'll just go back to this report error and abort, um, and we'll just look at the term. Uh, term is term. And so we get this thing. And we can just start working our way through this pattern match. Like that, this is a totally a valid uh, way. Like, it's, okay, there's this inlined node. What the hell is that thing? Who cares? Inlined. This is created by the fact that it's inlined and it has some some stuff on it. But it has these three arguments, and we could command click on it and see in this quotes file, which is the holy grail of macro writing. You will know this this file up and down like the back of your hand. You can see all of the unapply matchers. So this takes an inline node and returns a thruple, a thruple, of an option of a tree, a list of definitions, and then a term. Doesn't really explain what that is, unfortunately. If you look at the apply method, you can kind of get an idea. There's this call, bindings, and expansion. Okay. Turns out that if we... Whatever that means. Uh, the, term, the term is what we want on the right-hand side. And this is this block, a block of a list of a def def, which is, which is crazy. What is a block? A block is basically an abstract syntax tree of whenever you have multiple lines of code. So whenever you have these these square brackets, so you know print line uh, one two three, and then hello. So a, a block is basically going to be a list of statements or expressions followed by the final resulting expression, right? Because this is going to be equal to a string. So this whole thing is going to be a block that terminates in a string. And so these are just performed for the side effects or for defining intermediate values and then finally that's the result a def def is when you define a method so what the hell is going on and if i go back to uh this giant file and i'm going to look for this object i'm going to say lambda module uh and this kind of explains it a lambda in source code is represented as a local method and a closure so the way a lambda gets turned gets gets um, represented by the abstract syntax tree and AC AST Explorer is totally nice. Um, I'm not sure if this will help us exactly in this situation, um, but definitely play around with it a little bit. Uh, highly recommend. Um, that's a that's a great great tip. Um, I just don't want to ch change. I should figure out how to ch share multiple windows at once. Um, but yeah, basically this is going to turn into a block that first defines the method and then returns this closure thing. So that's what we're seeing in, in, in this thing. It's a block that defines this and then returns an anonymous reference to that. Like the last I, thing in here is this anon fun thing, which is what the method was defined. So it's crazy looking. Uh, and this is just something you have to learn and it's, it's awful. But the nice thing is, there's also an unapply in the Lambda that they give to us that matches that crazy pattern, which takes the argument, gives you a list of all the arguments, which we don't care about, and then the right-hand side. So we can just dig in and we're going to see that we actually get a second slightly smaller block because of what we were looking at before when we actually printed the, um, the full uh, tr uh, expert of the selector dot show, because right, we had the, um, we had this double Nested chain lambdas. of lambdas. So a, a first lambda, a second lambda. So we want to get to the second lambda. So what do we do? Lambda again. All right. And now we have something we can deal with. This is actually sort of readable. We're applying planet to our launch missiles. And let me actually sh also show this term. Show term. Term dot show. And we can see that it's underscore one launch missiles planet. And what do we care about? We care about this part. So let me just copy this thing 
But who cares? I mean, this is getting kind of crazy, but but who cares? We could break this up if we wanted to. Um, uh, oops. Gonna do this. So what do we care about? We don't care about the identifier, really. Uh, we just care. We don't care about the arguments at all. Um, for now, we just care about the... Uh, about the name. I, uh, yeah, I think I have too many... Something's been, okay, one too many of those. Uh, we just care about the method name. So the, uh, the method name. And what is the method name? Uh, so there's no more term. Maybe I'll say, uh, I'll make this the term, the select node. And we can say the method name is method name. Let's take a look. Method name is launch missiles. Launch missiles. We found it. So that's pretty cool. And who cares about anything else? Uh, Let's implement this, because um, it's it's nine oh five. So let's get to the let's get to the let's cut to the chase here. What is the implementation? Well, it was stubbed. Dot insert impl of the service, which we can refer to in here because we've included this type. If I remove this, we would see that uh, an error that would just say we need a type and scope. Then we would need the method that, name. That's a type bound has to... or a, a, a type bound on it with the word type. It's kind of a. <laughs> It's, it's a context bound with the word type because type is this special yeah, Scala yeah. quoted thing that represents that you have a type wrapper for that thing. It's a little wild. Um, <laughs> uh, and so the first thing we need is a, the method name as a string. But of course, this needs to be an expert that we interpolate here. So we kind of ran into this last time. If I'm going a little fast, um, we can't just put the method. We can't just interpolate the method name in here because it needs an expert. And so to do this, we wrap the string in this expert constructor, which turns it into, it goes from a, a normal runtime string in our world to a literal constant string, um, constant of, he of hello, which is an abstract syntax tree node that we can splice into an abstract syntax tree quote. And then finally, the second argument to, to insert impl is, and I forget, the, the cool thing about Scala is also with macros, you can command click on these things in quotes, which is super cool. Uh, and okay, it's just comma separated. And well, we have the result as an expert already, and it uh, it's already an expert. And notice we never actually inline that because we don't care about ever analyzing the structure of this syntax tree. We don't, we just don't care about it. So we don't need to say this, this is an not inline. yet. We not yet. And I'm not sure if ever it depends. Um, but for now, I can't think of a reason. And so uh, we can still investigate its type and stuff like that. Then? Uh, yeah. We can actually ask for the type of this, I, I believe. But that's a good question. We should see if it if it's if it's going to widen it to any, or we'll, we might need to eventually do something else when we want to make sure that it aligns to the actual return type here. And we have to do we have to deal with the errors. But this is not the final result. But let's see what we have. It compiles first of all, and it runs, which is super cool. So let me uh, also replace these with let's break stub. It. Let's... Oh, okay, that works. No. Well, first let's 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 make it happy, and then we'll destroy it. It still com it still runs, uh, and just to make sure that that's indeed the the, the truth. What's the what's the other way it can fail here? Uh, oh yeah, it t fails fails with invalid uh, unauthorized, I believe. Let's see, do it. Well, what if cool. you make the text um, incorrect? So like you know, it's not the right it's not the right error. Oh, there you go. That's what happens. As a large lunar missile array, I'm unable to authenticate you. So, cool. That's good. And now it passes. That works. Uh, so, so, so yeah, that we implemented it. Um, of course, as you pointed out, we can put literally anything here, and we're not going to get a compile time error. It's going to be a crazy runtime cast exception because of just how we're looking it up in the map and casting it to what we think it is. But this is where instead we're going to want to look at the the corresponding types of these things and make sure that everything is cool. Maybe just very quickly, I can see, do we even have the, the result type of this thing? So result, um, result dot uh, as term dot type uh, dot show. We'll see what we get here. It might say any, and that's totally fine. Um, notice how it actually said result proxy three, which is kind of funny uh, because that's that is a type. It's just a uh, it's the narrowest type possible. It's the actual type of that identifier. So one of these crazy tricks is widen term ref by name, and now it's going to widen it to zio any llm error nothing. So it actually does know the type, despite wow. the fact that we said it's any. It knows exactly what we passed in. The cool thing about macros, right? It it uh, 
it doesn't lose that information like we would in normal runtime code. So we don't even need to inline it. Maybe if we did, we'd get even more information, but it seems like we have the exact information. Um, similarly, we can get the result of this, this left-hand side and make sure that they're the same, otherwise give a nice error message with pretty colors, of course. But I want to stop there just because well, we've gone for an hour. It's computer hour, even though last time we only did half an hour. But um, we weren't attacked, and we had nice people show up. So, uh, yeah, I'll just, like, any, any final questions from anybody? I know I went pretty fast there at the end. Um, there's still some stuff we can do next week to, to clean it up, add error handling, uh, and then figure out how we're going to implement this thing. But that's basically the process for implementing macros. Have your, your well, source you AST. Are you, are you planning on up uploading this? Sorry to interrupt. Yes, I will, I will push this to my GitHub under a computer hour repo. Um, I, I have a couple of commits already from last time. Uh, where is the nice. thing? So commits. Oh, actually, yeah, start of, ep start of episode two, end of episode one. Yippee. So you should be able to follow along, hopefully. Um, but yeah, uh, any, any, uh, any, any final questions? Otherwise, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it. Okay, yeah, thanks, Jason. Thanks, thanks, Ibrahim. That was fun. Uh, we'll be back here, I think, next week at some point. Uh, we'll announce it on Sounds the good. internet. So, uh, bye, everybody. I'll stop recording now. Uh, I hope this works.